instruction. Well, it'll be decided on this big hill, the hill record, 212 metres, and in a few moments before we get underway with today's competition, we'll see that record distance set yesterday by Norway's Lasse Odesson. The important uh, points on the hill, 185 metres, the calculation point, 1.2 points for every metre beyond that as a bonus and deducted for uh, every metre below. Now here is Lasse Odesson from uh, Norway. This was uh, yesterday in the trial jump before the competition for real. Bredesen, his teammate, had just preceded him and set a new world record of 110. And then up pops Lasse, really good headwind conditions and uh, just has the leg strength there to hold his bottom off the snow and uh, successfully set a new record. Well, Lasse uh, in uh, pretty good form. But still, uh, of course, looking for a victory, either in ski flying or ski jumping, but has the distinction of uh, producing the longest jump in the history of this sport. And there are now some 18 men who have gone over that magic 200 metre mark. Just think of your local football pitch, think of Wembley Stadium, twice the length from goal post to goal post in just about seven seconds and a delighted Tron Pedersen. Well, as you can see, not too much snow around. They've been bringing it in by helicopter during the week when the temperatures were very, very warm. And uh, this is the start order today. One or two absentees, Bruno Reutler, who had that very uh, good third place in Oslo. He qualified yesterday, but not for today. The same for Kasai of Japan. He hasn't made it either. Holsetter Dufner, who's uh, recovering from concussion. Uh, he's not in, obviously. And Vilcante also not in the lineup. And just to emphasize that Andy Goldberger injured in Lati. He's here as a spectator, but uh, he, of course, taking no part. Like Mika Leitinen, also recovering from a Lati injury. You might have seen Tommy Ingebrigtsen there, the former world champion. Well, he's made it today, didn't yesterday, and he will jump. Sakala, who had his best competition of the season so far, finishing uh, in the top ten and uh, really coming alive, the world champion of ski flying of 1994 when the championships were held here. And uh, the best is ever coming last, and uh, the last will be Primoz Paterka, who yesterday, as a result of uh, Disa Thomas' misfortunes, um, luckily for him, not being able to uh, have a secure landing at 213 metres. The World Cup title for this season has gone to Primoz Paterka of Slovenia. So today, very much a celebration, but still at stake is the ski flying World Cup title. Uh, and Paterka is just behind. More of that when we see them, but now we're going to pick up the action in this first jump now with Artur Kamidulin, one of the young Russians. And uh, coming out of gate eight, building up the speed to 100 kilometers an hour. That's just about 62 miles an hour. Oof. And just catching an edge there. And as you can see, the snow are very discolored. It's, uh, very hard underneath there and uh, just looks as if he's had the wind knocked out of him think he's okay actually round about uh, 140 meters here for the young russian this part fine no problems here at all you can see the right ski not level with the left and uh, you'll see where he pays for it as he comes into land here because uh, he really gets all the weight on that uh, left ski pushes down now he's got no support on the right hand side can't hold it skis uh, touch but don't cross but that's a heavy number remember landing at some 62 63 miles an hour you pick up a bit of extra speed uh, let's hope he's okay, Kamidulin of uh, Russia. He has jumped 178 metres there, very quickly out to uh, attend to him here. Vilcante had a fall yesterday, which accounts for him not uh, taking part in the competition today. 
together with uh, Dufner, but as far as we understand, they're okay. It's uh, not the way you want to really uh, end the season, but uh, safety, precaution, that's the name of the day. Good round of applause. 55,000 plus here yesterday. Now, here's a man who didn't uh, qualify, Urban France, the bronze medalist from last year's World Championships of Ski Flying in Bad Mittendorf in Austria, won, of course, by Andy Goldberger with the Finn, Yanni Ahonen in silver medal position, and he's good at this game when he gets it right. And France, well, two-footed, so he's going to pay... Uh, on the landing there, so no telemark, 17 is the best he could hope for, but in the 170s there for Slovenia. Interestingly enough, one of the uh, Vorspring over the four jumpers jumped 205 and a half, that was Janusz Goran, so uh, I wonder why he was a, a Vorspringer today, but he had a happy moment here a little while ago. Now here's a very, very good uh, up-and-coming uh, Norwegian, Already he has gone over 201 metres, 201.5. That was in training for yesterday's competition, Stenrud. And that was nicely made, and this is going to be another good effort. And that's going to take the lead in this first round. Early days, though. But really, this is a find here for Tron Pedersen. Ski flying uh, comes to Norway next year at uh, Vikersund. Which, interestingly, I can remember hosting the 1990 World Championships, which Dieter Toma won. 194 metres and very good style. Watch the landing here for the judges giving him 19. So uh, they've uh, just taken off the half, the odd point, for bits and pieces, but nothing serious. Good effort there by Stensrud of Norway. Well, this is uh, Yoshioka, but uh, I can tell you that what they've done is they've moved the gate down. It's now down to gate number seven. And that's uh, Manobu Ono. As a result of that Stensrud jump, while we were watching the slow motion, they've actually, the jury have got a bit concerned the wind here, very difficult to predict. I know we're hard on the jury and we say that they should get it right every time, but it isn't an easy task, I can tell you that. So Stensrud is going to be sick as the proverbial parrot because... Uh, they're going to move it down again. No, I don't think so. I think it's uh, going to be at seven. Just to uh, confirm that, Stensrud yesterday finished in seventh place, which is a PB for him, with 192.5 and 189.5. And uh, today in competition, he's done 194. That's his best com competition ski flying effort, but he's got that 201.5 metres in the bag and uh, joins that uh, not quite so elite club of 200. It was a bit special until really last year. But now with Planitsu modified the hill over the knoll, which allows you to get this extra distance, they uh, very determined to be uh, the one hill in the world which always dominates. Not too many ski flying hills around the uh, world. Harachov in the Czech Republic, Vikersund in Norway, Obersdorf in Germany, and Planitsa very much the capital there it is confirmation there gate seven for Yoshioka 110.41 meters compared with 111.81 so that's uh, more than a meter down so that's quite a difference and I would think the in-run speed could well drop below 100 kilometers per hour here is uh, Yoshioka 100 kilometers exactly, which is uh, near as damn it, 62 miles an hour. And Yoshioka there getting uh, nice style. Precious wrong there, but it's shorter than it would be coming from a lower gate with a lower in run. So 
This is the new pace set, 176 there, and good style, 166.2 points his total. That's the new target, and of course, Stensrud and those who preceded him will have to jump again. Dolezal, now here's uh, another man who didn't qualify yesterday for a jump, but can have a crack at the ski flying now. He's been just short of 200 in his career, but he's not going to get there today. He got that completely wrong. That's uh, barely 100 metres. He's jumped 199 in Halachov on uh, home snow. But uh, he won't be taking part in the second jump, I can tell you that. 90 metres means that uh, he's nowhere near the sort of points total, 46.5, that he would need to qualify. Only the top 30, of course. Just checking the distance on the skis. Not more than 57% of the ski must be in front of the top of the boot. Now Robert Meglitz for Slovenia from Duple. Didn't qualify for a second jump yesterday. 147 was the best he did then, and that's worse. So Meglitz, his one high point of the season remains that fourth place he got in Bad Mittendorf early in February in the first of the four ski flying competitions of the current season. But uh, his ski jumping for 1997, or the current season now, completed because he won't be required to climb the hill again. Tommy Ingebrigtsen. Junior world champion in 1995, as well as senior world champion. He struggled as he's grown up, his physical change. But don't uh, write him off, although I think uh, this is uh, quite a tough test for him. And Ingebrigtsen, well, not uh, much further than Meglitz, to be honest. It's a bit difficult to uh, spot the distances here. As you can see, there are very few horizontal lines on the upper part of the hill. So uh, we're trying to just get in about the right part. 121 metres there and puts him into second place. So still uh, at the moment, Yoshioka, who leads after the restart. And here's Chekon, Roberto Chekon. Twice he's been bronze medalist in the ski flying world championships. But he's really uh, struggled in recent time. He was third here in Planitza behind uh, Sakala, who won the title in 1994. And uh, that's, uh, I have to say, a bit typical about Roberto's season there. Over 150, but uh, well short of Yoshioka's 176. So the crowd a bit subdued, but don't worry, it will get warmed up soon. About uh, a month from now. You see, uh, yesterday got a couple of points for finishing 28. His best jump, the first one, 173 metres. And he's been as far as 197 and a half in training and qualification here but that's uh, again on the low on the short side there for you see 140 meters uh, of that order in fact not quite so far there and third at the moment interesting to see what the cut is it's a bit difficult to tell with the restart uh, here's uh, Miyahira for Japan. Again, another man who just failed to qualify for a second jump yesterday. Head a little high there, I would have thought. 99 kilometers, that would explain why the uh, speed is a touch on the low side. And uh, two-footed on the landing there from Hideyaru. Bit further than Hautamaki, but uh, well short of uh, Kazuo Yoshioka. His teammate who leads, there's Manabu Ono. He'll be uh, happy to get a rest like most of these boys. It's been a long season from December to today. So confirmation there for Mio here, 150 and a half metres. Now here's uh, Pasi Kitosaho. 
from uh, well they've got him down from uh, Kelpio but uh, I thought he was uh, a Lati man myself second in Lati on the big hill finished champion on the 60 meter hill today he's on the 185 quite a difference and uh, trying to scrabble a telemark there, but it doesn't really matter, he's so short. You really uh, have to feel the uh, table here, 16s. This is not going to be good news for him, I don't think. Fifth, 111 points, might not make it today. Ralph uh, Gebstedt. Gebstedt, well, he's got one World Cup success in his uh, lifetime, and that was on a ski flying hill, this one, back in 1991. That remains his personal best to this day. And Gebstedt looks really uncertain there. He's quite uh, vertical. He really wasn't able to stretch out. And uh, that's uh, shorter than Kito Saar. It's under 130 metres there from Gebstedt. And that's really going to knock him down the order. So everybody a little quiet at the moment. Frank Salvi, hand held aloft there. As he gets ready to line up Didier Mola. Having his uh, first jump of the weekend. And Didier, again, sub-140. Had uh, a few interesting moments. That very good finish in Trondheim of the World Championships when he was six. Frank there, well, he'll probably go on next season, certainly to Nagano. Interesting, Frank Salvi. He doesn't actually have a written contract. It's uh, a handshake with the French Federation. But that's no uh, bad way. He's happy about that. But uh, I'd like to see him get a little bit of success would uh, deserve that for the energy and effort he puts into trying to keep or bring France to the top. And he's uh, had a little bit of glory with Nicolas Dessum, and there's possibly some more to come. Dessum still to jump, of course. Now Steinau for Switzerland. 18th here yesterday with 183 metres in his first uh, jump. Uh, Steinau there over 150. But still, it's Yoshioka of Japan who leads at the moment. Steinauer, that 18th place yesterday, uh, pretty well his best of the season, bar one other performance. That was in Lati when he finished 13th in that uh, one jump competition. Now, Stefan Horngacher. High hopes for him this season, having recovered from the virus that knocked him out of all competition last season. Hasn't really worked out, but that was a good piece of timing there off the table. And Horngacker is going long. That's the new leader in a big way. The 27-year-old from Virgil for Andy Felder in what is his last competition, Andy Felder. He'll be giving up the responsibility for the Austrian ski jumping team, given up his one way. Some of the uh, press uh, put it more directly, given the sack would be another way of describing it. But Horngacher, 198.5 metres, and gets the distance. You can see the landing where most of the, the deductions have been made from style two feet side by side, but nonetheless, good jump there by Stefan. Now here's uh, Akira Higashi. Higashi, 198.5 metres, his uh, personal best. This is uh, the man who so often gets one good jump and uh, one poor jump. This looks uh, promising here from Higashi. Oh, he's going further than Hongaka, and he stood up. That's over 200 metres, and Ono's delighted because 
He's now joined the club of uh, 200. Look at this here for Higashi. Really uh, sense that really nice. Look how steady he is in the air. Arms glued by the side, just uh, with the fingertips, just uh, being aware of what the air is doing around him. Nice and steady. And uh, well, the landing, you can judge for yourself. You know it well enough by now that when someone lands like this, it's not the classic telemark with one knee bent and in front of the others. And the temptation got very close to putting that left hand on the snow which would have cut his star marks in half, but a broad smile there for a man who represents the Nika Whiskey Club, so I wonder whether they get their bonuses in the uh, product. Jerome Gay. A bit expensive over there, but uh, nonetheless, good jump there. Uh, he's in second place, uh, Higashi, by the way, although he's uh, jumped further than Horngacher, the style the Horngak is just that little bit better. And Jerome, well, respectable would be the appropriate adjective for that. Well over 150, in fact, over 160, probably. He's had uh, a few moments. He's uh, what you have to describe as a good support jumper with regard to the team, but he's... Whether he's ever going to make it to the podium, one would have to doubt. Tarzan, otherwise known as uh, Sylvan Freiholz, with uh, Joachim Winterlich. These two men who don't exactly get on, the coach and the, the athlete. But Freiholz. Oh, nice landing there by Freiholz. That's going to keep his star marks up. Just a little wide on the undercarriage, but nonetheless, at least he's going to avoid 17s. Probably 18 and a half, 19 from the Norwegian judge. Or Sven. So 182 and a half meters, and those star marks help him up into third place. Bronze medalist, of course, Freiholz in the World Championships. Now, Matea. Mateo hasn't uh, looked too happy about ski flying. Certainly didn't yesterday when he finished 42nd, just under 150 metres. His best ever last uh, season in uh, Kulm in Austria, 185. Oh, and he's not going to go far now. He looked really nervous on the in-run. And uh, that's short, and I would think or at least I'll hazard a guess that he isn't going to qualify for a second jump. 132 metres, 25% of his star marks, he's 12th now, and although he's jumping with bid 44, remember there are 50 competitors, but there's a whole group of 15 who have to re-jump. With the changing of the start gate by the jury to control the in-run speed in what are not easy conditions to assess. One, two meters per second of wind. It's not a, it's not a lot, but uh, remember, you're totally exposed up there. There it is, uh, coming in from the left-hand side, with uh, all the protection nets on the right, ironically. Bovadia for Trondheim and Norway, and uh, this is another young man who might struggle to qualify. About the same zone as Matteo, who just preceded him. But Lee, 134, so a bit further than Matea. And you can see the landing area, it's uh, quite soft and tricky. Temperature, not cold, not particularly cold overnight. Minus uh, one, the snow on the in run now. This is Yaroslav Sakala. Very good effort by Sakala yesterday to finish fifth. His best of the season, and this is going the right way as well. Good telemark. And uh, Sakala's going to get decent points here. Actually, it's not quite as far as I thought it was originally going to be. 18 and a half. So he's going to have some work to do on the second jump. 
if he wants to equal or better that fifth place finish, I would think. 171 and a half meters for Sakala just come through. So that'll keep him in touch, but of course, still plenty of good jumpers to go. At the moment, he is fifth. Still Hongaka and Higashi, the uh, leaders. Uh, he and hands here Jekyll from uh, Schoenach. A little bit too much power there off the end of the table, touched on his toes and but a bit too keen, I would think. A bit like uh, Horvard Lee. Uh, that's uh, over 160 though, so he should actually make it through to the uh, second round. Sukashek for the Czech Republic from uh, French Stadt uh, in his time, a former junior world medalist with the Czech team. Just lost his way a bit last season, dropped to 60 below 16th in the World Cup rankings. But uh, Sukashek in the last few weeks beginning to find his form. He was 22nd coming into today's competition and this is a decent effort here. Little scissors with the ski which is going to cost him in terms of style but this is well over 180 metres here. Quite uh, good bravery. 188 meters and 19s there so they've taken very little off and he now takes up third place and uh, what an improvement that is uh, at the moment he was 15th yesterday with 190 meters and 174 and a half Hilvart now with uh, Horn Gacker his teammate flying the Austrian flag he's of course jumped 198 and a half meters Hervart from Meyerhofen ski flying he didn't uh, take part in the first two rounds at Bad Mittendorf this season and he was 24th yesterday didn't get over 180 meters This is uh, short, under, well under 150, well under 140, and in fact it's under 130 metres now. So, uh, no second jump I can predict there for Martin Hovall. 128 metres with 25% of your star marks gone, puts him in 17th place. So, uh, only 13 have to better that, and I think that will happen. Desum, well, of course, uh, you say that, but uh, anything can happen. Now, uh, Desum for France. Not a great day for him yesterday, just jumped 107 metres. He uh, has this characteristic of uneven pressure on his skis. Just watch the left ski as he comes off. It tends to be higher than the right, there it is again. And that's with the wind underneath, it pushes him out to the right. Has Oh, and he's just tumbled. Now, you don't see uh, Desum tumble, he looks fine to me. Be interesting to see what happened here. This was fine. Very good, no real problem here. Just the same as it normally is. Remember, only 20 years of age. First Frenchman ever to win a World Cup competition. He's never won a ski flying event I hasten to add oh and the binding the binding gives way and uh, well I don't really think you can put down that that down to Nicholas now half his marks have gone 172 and a half meters and that leaves him down in 11th place I think he's all right but they <laughs> well doesn't take well I don't blame him being hassled off after you've had a tumble down there how would he like to fall at 62 miles an hour onto some hard snow now Espen Bredesen Bredesen ski flying world silver medalist here in 1994 behind 
Yaroslav Sakala. In 1994, he jumped 172 and 182 meters, but Bredesen's already going much further than that. Now, can he do it today as he did yesterday? Not bad, but the style is, the style is super. He's going to get good points for that. Very good in the air and very solid and sweet and soft on the landing. Just look at this telemark. This is almost perfect. The distance between the skis, not too wide, not too close. That's a nice landing. Good effort there by Espen. Remember, he's got 210 as his personal best. 187 and... Uh, Look at that, 20 from the Slovenian judge and a couple of 19 and a half, and that keeps him in the hunt at the moment. Andy Vidherzl now for Austria. 205 metres yesterday. Not in competition, I hasten to add. That was uh, in warm-up. But it uh, doesn't matter, still counts. So Vidherzl... Quite as good, I would think. He gets the telemark there. It's about the same as Bredesen, but Bredesen, uh, good star marks. There can't be too much between these two men, you know. 19s, look at this. Fifth place, 186.5. He's only half a metre behind Bredesen, Bredesen, who went just before him. And uh, Vidherzl, another youngster, only 20 years of age. So the Austrians having a slightly better day of it. Of course, uh, Andy Goldberger, the world champion, sidelined after that Larty crash. He's okay. He'll be uh, he'll be back and firing on all cylinders for next season. Just that uh, the doctors uh, want to make sure Andy uh, left alone. He probably uh, jumped, but that wouldn't be wise. Jokel Soy now for Norway. Didn't quite get that as well as he's done before here. But it's a, another man who's got into that mid-180s zone. Good effort yesterday, eighth place finish in uh, Kulm. He was 12th and 13th, so he's done well in terms of the ski flying. 184 and a half metres. Stahl is uh, not uh, anything to criticise him for, but he's not in the first half dozen. Okabe leads the rankings from Paterka, and we're getting very close to them now. But here's the world record holder, Lassie Odesson, for Norway. Seems to have been around for ages, Lassie, but he's only 23. And uh, that's uh, a good effort there by Odesson. Way up in the 190s. Well, uh, I've given him his birthday just a bit early, but that uh, will certainly be some sort of reward. Very close to 200 again, 198 metres it is, and uh, good style. And where's that going to put him? Got to put him up into the first three for sure. Second place unofficially at the moment for Lassie Odesson. Yanni Soinenen, who joined the 200 club yesterday with a very good 203 and a half, you can see it there. And uh, that third place finish yesterday, his third podium of the season. And really pouring down there, and that's not uh, a bad effort there by Soinenen, but it's... Uh, it's not going to put him in a very strong position to try and equal or better the third place. It's respectable. But his head's dropped there. He doesn't smile at the best of times too much, Yanni, but 162 metres, 13th place. He'll qualify. Ahonen, silver medalist in the World Championships behind Andy Goldberger. He really does enjoy ski flying, uh, Yanni, from uh, Lati. Again, another teenager. Seems to have been around for ages, like Lassie Odesson. But got plenty of years ahead of him. And Ahonen 
170. The distance. Outside the top 20 here, 24 hours ago. Bad Mittendorf, he was 8th and 4th. Currently, uh, before today's competition, he was 6th uh, in the Ski Flying World Cup rankings for the season, so that might have dented his chances a bit there. 6 to go in this uh, first round, and here's uh, Saito, or I should say, here's Brendan of Norway. Now, that's not going to be as good as he's done. Brendan, the seventh best jumper of the season, the top Norwegian in terms of the World Cup, the season rankings. And 169 meters, and the style uh, could have been better, as you can see. No uh, perfect landing for him, and he'll struggle to uh, match the 12th place he got yesterday. That's a bit disappointing. Now here's Saito. Saito was outside the top 10, 182 and 188 meters. Now I wonder what he can do today. Had a busy old season as Saito. He's been a great servant for the Japanese team. But I just wonder whether there's a little bit of mental as well as physical fatigue in him at the moment. That's well, well down. 100, 150 meters now for Saito. Now 16 and a half. Where that's, where's that going to put him? 20th place. Now this is dodgy because there are four to jump now and then there are 15 again. Admittedly, they're not exactly the stars of the circuit. They're the novices, the less experienced men. But Saito could perhaps struggle. Here's the man who leads the ski flying at World Cup rankings. 50 points ahead of Primoz Paterka. So it's not over yet. And Takanabu Okabe, the hero of yesterday, is desperately short. Now, I think if I said Saito might not qualify, surely Okabe is not going to because that is under 150. And Manobu Ono, the head coach for Japan, that was a pain expression, 132 meters, and he's opened the door now for Primoz Paterka to win the title here as well. Because there was only 50 points between them. So Paterka really, well, the only hope Akabi's got, frankly, is that Paterka also fails to qualify. Funaki from Japan. It really has been a pleasure to watch this man jump this season. Great position on the in run, usually gets uh, terrific style marks. Oh, look at that lovely extended lean, strong legs. Little bit of indifference in the skis, lovely telemark. My goodness, that was good. I thought Bredesen's was good, but that was an excellent putting down of the undercarriage. And Funaki there has got to get 19s for sure. Distance, high 180s, I would think. 19s, nothing, 186 goes 7. So, uh, not out of it. Dita Toma, two to jump before the uh, repeats now. So, Toma, not figuring he didn't jump in uh, Bad Mittendorf, and of course, uh, Yesterday's disappointment when he couldn't stand up when he jumped 213 meters effectively cost him the title. Wolfgang Stuart there, the assistant coach for Germany, gives Toma the signal to build up the speed on the in run. But he's still a great jumper to watch, and this is another one. This is going the right way now for Toma. Oh, yes, that's the longest jump by a long, long way. That is getting right up to the world record distance. Now, I'm not sure whether it's there. Can't really see the disc, but look at this performance here from Toma. He really has given us so much fun this season. Paterka's won more events. His percentage of podiums much the higher. But Paterka will have to go some to match this. He follows Toma, but this is 211 metres 
and that takes the lead in a very convincing way. Thomas going to have a good few points advantage, 202.7 points, and that's uh, ahead now of Lassie Otterson, who's got 192.1, so he's got 10-point lead at the moment here. And here's Primoz Paterka, the World Cup champion, the Four Hills champion, and a real chance this afternoon of becoming the ski flying World Cup champion. Well, it's respectable. A hundred and eighty-six meters there for Paterka, which is going to be good enough to ensure that he really has a challenge because Andy Goldberger was third in the World Cup rankings for ski flying. He, of course, not in action. So the odds are still on Paterka. But Toma leads after the first round, still more to come. Toma leads, but uh, of course, the reduction of the bar to uh, gate number seven means that those who went early have got to do it again. So this is Mateusz Kladnik for Slovenia who's uh, now taking his second effort. He had 132, that was the distance he achieved, but that's been cancelled off. And none of these men really uh, likely to challenge Toma, I would think. So, the crowd uh, already uh, thinking, in fact, of the uh, second jump. There it is, Toma from Otterson and Higashi, Horngacher and uh, Sukashek. And uh, 202.7 points, that's uh, a 10-point advantage, roughly, which is about 8.5 metres. Not uh, very much in ski flying terms. And in the air. That's uh, Yuri Radel. Has jumped to 191 and a half, but you can see 129. That's even worse, uh, a long way worse than his uh, first effort. Peter Toma. Quick word there with him about his... Uh, Personal best, 211 metres. He's jumped, of course, 213, but it doesn't count really because he touched uh, the snow with his fingers. So, 211 today and standing up, that's a very good performance. Makes him second in the all-time list now, Dita Toma. Just a metre behind Glassy Otterson. This is uh, Marco Bogati for Slovenia again. A group of young Slovenians. and 123 for him so at the moment none of these youngsters really making an impression rather disappointing I have to say for the local crowd 34th so he doesn't make the cut either remember only the top 30 will be invited to climb up this classic hill here's another youngster Jaka Grozna Grozna One of the uh, promising juniors, 18 years of age, from uh, Kran. Member of the uh, team that took the Junior World Bronze Medal last season. Well, that's uh, well down as well. It's actually uh, 11th individually in the Junior World Championships. The uh, Slovenians, they've done tremendously well. They've got a, a great 10-year plan, which has produced uh, Primoz Paterka to win the World Cup in only his second full season. And that's a mighty impressive performance. And uh, these uh, very good hosts rightfully enjoying the finale. Now, uh, next man to jump. In the air, uh, Caligaro. Uh, 
And again, back to my mistake there, Stegner, Caligaro still to come. And 132 metres, so a little better. Now here's uh, Jure Yerman. Again, uh, another of the... Junior group. Again, the in-run speed is good enough, but too much uh, power off the end of the table. Up and rather quickly down. And you can see uh, it uh, is a bit rough on the uh, landing part of the hill here by these younger men. Not having a great time of it, but uh, enjoying the occasion. 132 metres there for Yerman and 30th, well, if uh, no one does better, he will qualify, but I've got a feeling that's not the way it's going to be. Next man to jump here is uh, Rolando Caligaro, comes out of the Nordic combined squad, and uh, really, he's got to make up his mind pretty soon whether he's going to be a Nordic combined man with uh, teammate Roman Perko, who won the Junior Worlds, or whether he's going to be a specialist jumper. Obviously, uh, it's uh, a bigger theatre, the specialist ski jumping. But the competition, not to disrespect the Nordic combined people, is that much hotter. So, uh, Janazic for Slovenia yet again. And then uh, should be Kamidulin, but of course uh, he was the young Russian who crashed before the bar was uh, put down and the in-run speed reduced. Be nice for one of these youngsters to actually uh, something that's uh, again part of the education really big stage huge crowd looking up at you you can see there on the outrun there how soft the snow is as he carves round to pull up just 99 meters on a hill where they're jumping over 200 Coming down now, should be uh, Skodak. And again, none of these uh, men really making a difference. There's one or two to come, Ruben, France for Slovenia, and uh, also Stensrud, who I'll be looking for to perhaps squeeze their way into the top 30. But Skotak, I'm afraid, for the Czech Republic. Not uh, making it on this occasion. In the air now, this is Luca Chevalier for France. Well, uh, gets the telemark landing. Luca, who jumped 140 and a half in his first effort, but of course that doesn't count. So uh, this time, really would uh, prefer to get it right. Salvi with uh, a quizzical look there, 137, so two very similar jumps, but remember, coming from a lower in-run gate, but Chevalier, I think he's going to be asked to work a lot harder next season. Right, the bronze medalist from last year. Urban France, 173 metres when it was from gate 8, now he's at gate 7, can he qualify? It'd be lovely if he could, nice chat. Slovenians uh, would like that. Ooh, dodgy, not sure about that.
So 134 meters and 29, so he really is on the border zone. So next man to uh, go. This is uh, Rico Meinl, didn't qualify yesterday. Jumped uh, 183 metres at uh, Bad Middendorf. 126 here earlier today, but that's again, that's not going to qualify him, I'm afraid. And uh, Rico Meinl will not jump again. Just a few more to go now. Still, of course, Dieter Toma, the man who leads the competition from Lassie Odesson. And uh, Akira Higashi in third place ahead of Hongaka, with Sukashek ahead of Bredesen. They're fifth and sixth, respectively, and Meinl 133. So now uh, Gostiza. for uh, Slovenia, and you can see his PB there, 183. The Steeds are really uh, disappointing this season. Hasn't been uh, anything to be uh, happy about, I have to say. Uh, that's another poor effort by him. So, uh, crowd really uh, not really excited after the great leap of Toma and having seen their man Paterka safely negotiate the first jump. Interestingly we have Paterka in ninth place at the moment. Now here's uh, Volkov. Let's hope he uh, fares rather better than uh, Kamidulin, his young teammate who had that uh, nasty tumble earlier on. And uh, that's uh, not a qualifying effort. So uh, one more to jump and then the first round will really be over. And uh, very interesting to see now whether the next man, Henning Stensrud, who's uh, jumped over 201 metres, and he was the man who, if you like, uh, decided the jury's mind. He jumped. 194 metres with splendid 19s for style here. Fingers crossed this man can make it. Sort of injustice if he doesn't. Looks as if he... Oh, I wonder. I just wonder whether Henning Stenrud will get through. I'm not sure that he will, you know. Just uh, checking on that distance. 126, it's too short, he's 40th, and uh, that's uh, rotten luck on this man. Stenrud, who finished yesterday in the top 10, I think he was 7th by my memory, but uh, it hasn't gone his way today. And so at the end of the first jump, it's Dida Toma who leads the way with a splendid 211 metre effort. And... There it is, uh, 10 points, a uh, little bit more ahead of uh, the closest man to him, Lassie Odesson, knocking on the door. Wouldn't it be great if Lassie could uh, win today? Eight and a half metres, that is, when turned into distance by dividing using the 1.2 points per metre factor. Igashi, a very good third there. And a Horngaka also having an excellent day so far, that is, with Sukashek and Bredesen. Funaki and Paterka in the top 10 there. Paterka really just needs to do uh, a steady performance and he's going to really gather up all of this season's titles bar just the World Championships, which he must attack another time. Freiholz there and uh, we're going down to those that uh, just about scraped in. You can see Steinhaus in. Chacon has uh, made it. And uh, Desum getting in there despite the fall there, the 172 metres that he produced, good enough to uh, keep him there in 21st place, which tells you that really overall it hasn't been quite as good a first jump as it was yesterday in terms of quality jumping. But the wind conditions not particularly 
easy, kicking in from the side and over their left shoulder. So, Horvath Lee, the last to qualify, he will be the first to jump, and would you believe it, the leader in the ski flying World Cup rankings for 1997 doesn't qualify, Okabe doesn't make it, and opens the door there for Paterka to win yet another trophy. And it's quite interesting, just uh, have a little check on that, just to see how close it was. It's 104.8 points to Lee, 104.4 points to Okabe. So by 0.4 of a point, he loses his chance to uh, compete with Paterka. Well, that's the way of it. And uh, that second jump, of course, coming up after a little refreshment, a little recovery, and uh, a little anticipation. Will Toma go further? That'll be something to look forward to. After these messages here on Eurosport. In the whole of the 1996-1997 season, the jump that will decide the final title of the current campaign, the Ski Flying World Cup. Well, these are the 30 who qualified to take a second chance and by just 0.4 of a point, Takunabu Okabe, who was leading the ski flying on World Cup rankings, has failed to qualify. And that means that the door is very much open for Primoz Paterka to collect yet another honour. Remember, he's the 18-year-old Slovenian who's already won the World Cup, won the Four Hills, and here in front of a massive crowd of well over 50,000, could well be on his way to yet another honour in what has to be a fairy tale season for this young man. They poured in here, particularly to see him triumph. They've not been disappointed yet. He took the World Cup title yesterday when Dida Toma failed to stand up, having produced 213 metres the distance, which would have been a new world record. Today, though, he did stand up at 211, and he leads after the first round. He's got a 10-point advantage over Lassie Odison, who will be the penultimate jumper this afternoon, and that's a difference of eight and a half metres. So all to play for. Toma can't win either the World Cup. He's already given that up. He'll finish in second place, and a very creditable second place at that. And uh, he didn't compete in the first two rounds of the Ski Flying World Cup, so he's not a contender in that department. But it's uh, good to see, and maybe he'll go for an even bigger leap today on the big hill 185 meters the calculation point and now the last jump of the season for Horvath Lee and I think uh, as far as we've uh, been told they're coming out of gate seven again so that's uh, pretty important that they've not in fact moved the gate the jury they are rather worried about the wind so Hubert Lee teenager from Trondheim who's uh, really burst onto the scene in fact it was at Bad Mittendorf that we really uh, started to uh, see him for the uh, first time when he got uh, two very good results there Quite a lot of energy used in there, but uh, that's better than the first jump. That's over 160 metres, close to 170, I would think. And 170 and a half metres it is for Horvath Lee, which uh, sets the two-jump target when we get the other Slovenian mark. You can see there, 256.9. That's the uh, test for him now. Well, the rest have got to try and uh, catch him if they can. Lee in uh, Bad Mittendorf was 14th and 9th, so obviously ski flying, something that uh, he is very comfortable with. So just uh, getting ready now, Urban France for Slovenia. France who's been a bit ill from time to time. He wasn't very well uh, when the first uh, round of ski flying took place. So, 
This is uh, perhaps a, a final opportunity for him to uh, give himself a personal boost to get ready for training next year. Good uh, competition here, just might give him a little bit of motivation. 134 metres, first effort, not really spectacular enough to satisfy him, I'm sure of that. But he's one of the uh, senior boys of the class. The Turka, though, my goodness, he's matured. Large win there, 2.4 metres per second. And again, this is another jump into the middle territory. 160-ish there from uh, France. Whatever happens to these uh, Slovenians, uh, no one's going to stop the fans having a big party here. The buses have been pouring in. There were 900 of them yesterday, and I can't believe that there'll be uh, any fewer today. Now, uh, Stegnar did uh, quite well, this uh, youngster, to qualify. Comes from uh, Kritze, just 19 years of age, out of the B team. Again, one of the youngsters who was a junior world bronze medalist with the Slovenian team last season. These are the young men who are, in a sense, just a year or so behind the Turka. And... Stegnar just over 100 there, so that's rather disappointing for him. So 113 metres there. Didn't get uh, hold of the timing on the hill, and uh, that's a disappointing finish to his day. Now Pasi Kito Saho. Just thinking about Stegnar, I'm not sure that he wasn't in the same team as Paterka, who got that bronze medal. It uh, just shows you what the difference is. We'll check on that in a minute. Kido Saho, similar distance, similar jump. So that's not really going to advance his cause uh, too much. And now Sukashek. Sukashek, who had 188 meters. I should say, Kitosaho, I should say, uh, will be followed by Chevalier. Sukashek uh, still uh, got a bit of a wait before he uh, turns up. He was way up the table. And a change of start gate now to the uh, displeasure of the fans once again the jury changing their minds and this is uh, very disappointing to come down from gate number seven to gate number six but they really are concerned obviously about safety but what it means and the crowd know it is that the chances of some very long long jumps in this second round have uh, just diminished So all of those who've jumped are going to have to jump again, which means uh, Kidosaho, Stegnar, France and Lee will have another chance. Chevalier, though, will be the new man to set the standard. So gate six it is now. And uh, Lucas Chevalier, the man who... Uh, has his last jump. Junior world bronze medalist a couple of seasons ago. He's had to mix his studies with training. But I think, uh, as I mentioned in the first jump, he's really going to have to uh, work a lot harder next season. And that's uh, a poor effort. It's barely over 100 metres. Frank Solvi notes it. No, he doesn't even bother. 102 metres. Awful. Well, I think the jury uh, could well rue moving down to uh, gate number six. 
very difficult uh, for them. It isn't easy with these uh, thermal changes. So now uh, Hautamaki for Finland. You see Hautamaki. And again, another man on the short side. And uh, that's uh, not going to move him up. I wouldn't think not too far. Didier Mollard now for France, 137 meters. Just a metre further than Haltamaki and the same as uh, Chevalier, his own teammate. Didier, no, that's not going to do uh, very well either. And you can probably hear a few whistles there. The Venetians are uh, no, no different to any of us, I guess. They paid their money and they want to see some big jumps here. They want these boys to take the risks. 108 metres. This competition uh, not really uh, pleasing them at the moment. Of course, they want to see the Slovenians win, but... Uh, that's not the way of it at the moment. Next man to uh, jump for Japan. Very important, Hiroya Saito. Now, here's a quality man who had a poor first effort. This looks a lot better to me. Saito stretching out, yes, and gets a telemark. That's going to take uh, the lead now in this second round. So maybe now things will begin to move forward. Still, though, uh, as you can see, under 170 metres, but 285.4 points becomes the target. But lots of uh, better jumpers still to come. So, uh, Miyahira, Hiriharu, Miyahira. The man now on whom we focus, the wind really building up, you can see they're almost three metres per second. And Miyahira doesn't go past uh, Saito, his teammate. There was only half a metre in terms of distance between the two men, so Saito still has the advantage here. So, 130 to go with 150 leaves him a long way back. So still a fair way to go. Saito of Japan in the lead. Is who leads. And now Nicholas Desum, let's hope he stands up here. He's a lot further than Saito, over 20 metres further than him in the first round. But uh, his points were diminished by uh, having that tumble. Oh, that's a lot better there by Desum. What a good effort there by young Nicholas from uh, Courcheval. This time, no mistakes on the landing here. Well timed off the end of the table. And good marks there for Stahl. Gets the telemark solidly enough and uh, threatens Saito's marks. 188, and uh, he takes the lead. First man through. The 300 mark barrier, 309.1 points. So that's a much better note to end the season on for Nicolas Dessau. Now Steinauer, Steinauer, but well he was a lot shorter in terms of distance than Dessau. But of course, Dessau's points are a bit unrealistic because of the tumble. But for that tumble, he would have been a lot higher up the order, probably very close to being in the top 15. Next man to jump, though, here is the, the Swiss uh, Steinauer. And the wind really is beginning to uh, build at the moment. This is the jury's concern. 
Steinauer is not going to get past uh, Dessum. So France remain in front now. Steinauer is going to go into what? Third place? Yes, uh, third place for Steinauer with 145.5. Now, uh, another man who could do with uh, a decent final leap here. You can see 199 metres is personal best. Those were in the days of 1994 when he was really on top form. Bronze medalist in 92 and 94. Chacon runner-up in the World Cup in the 99 five, 1995 season to Andy Goldberger. But those uh, days are very distant in the memory. Just uh, looking at the jury. The jury it is who uh, changed the light from red to green, and then there's 15 seconds in which to uh, leave the bar. If you don't, then you're risking disqualification. And uh, Chacon, that's very poor. Little shake of the co head, head coach's uh, head there, Salvador, and that's 125 metres there. So, really disappointing effort. This uh, man who lives uh, not too far from here, just go over those high mountains there. Other side is Tarvisio in Udine, and that's uh, pretty well home for Chacon. Now Yanni Soininen from Ivaskula. Got some work to do here to pull himself up into a decent finishing position. Soininen. Going to finish the season in the top ten just about. But uh, not in style. That's uh, very similar to Chacon. So, everything uh, winding down in every sense of the word now. Not uh, really the way we would have liked to have seen this. Uh, we see France Desum from Saito, France Japan, the two leaders at the moment. Next to jump here, Jérôme Gay for France. Seen a lot of uh, Monsieur Salvi <laughs> this afternoon. Well, Jérôme, uh, around about 140 there. He never looked particularly safe, but uh, at least he's standing up and in one piece. But the uh, star was four. He's going to lose, uh, I would think, 15s. Yes, that's a fair assessment there. And the crowd really just don't like this. They're really giving the bird to the jury. Jury, uh, well, they make their assessment. They stand there in that little group at 198 metres to make their judgment. But why, oh, why the crowd are asking, did you put the in-run gate, the, the gate down to six, reduce the speed and... <laughs> Seemingly, not many can do anything with it, except at the moment, Desum with 188. It really is easier if you've got that bit more in-run speed. 101.1 even from gate six, I mean, that's still, to be fair to the jury, it's not... Uh, it's not a bad speed. People were jumping up to 200 off that speed in the first round, so you can understand their dilemma. It's the wind, I'm afraid, that's dictating this. 151 metres for Yekle there. Puts him into third place behind Saito and behind Desum.
So now, uh, Christian Brendan. Fifteenth after the uh, first jump there. But even he can't make much of this. And 130 it is. 113, my apologies. Ninth place, but he's not going to hold on to that for very long. But nothing the jumpers can do about this, I'm afraid. Uh, I think the jury of... Uh, as they say, made their bed and now they've got to lie in it because they can't move it up again. I mean, they probably should, but I don't think they will. So here's Sakala, fifth yesterday, 14th after the first jump today. The ski jumping man really loves this game. Oh, that's not bad at all now, and Sakala will get uh, up into the first three. Nice uh, position in the air here by Yaroslav. Really finding his uh, courage and his confidence. 174 metres and takes over the lead from Desum. Remember, Desum's jumped further if you add the two groups of metres together, but the difference is that fall. So the ski flying world champion who had his success here in 1994 proves that this is a hill that he certainly can master. So 13 to go, there are one or two of course you've got to re-jump. Ahonen, second place now, 169 and a half for him. Ahonen, who was only half a metre behind Sakala. Here's uh, Yoshioka. Now, Yoshioka was a good five metres ahead of uh, Sakala, who leads at the moment. So, 170 metres. He'd be very close if he could do that, but he isn't going to do that. Uh, that's a poor jump, unstylish. Lots of deductions and uh, 120. Meters, 122, in fact, and I'm afraid they're all going the same way. Just uh, stay with us. I know uh, this is a bit disappointing, but remember, we've still got Bredesen and Sukashek and Hongaka, Higashi, Orison and Toma. And uh, very soon we'll also have Paterka. But before... We get to him, we've got uh, Freiholz now. Now Freiholz, 182 and a half metres in the first round. So that's a good 11 metres ahead of Sakala. So 162 or three, and Switzerland would take the advantage. That's really what Freiholz has to do to take the lead, but of course the better men to follow him afterwards, so really needs to try and go for the biggie this time. Who knows what will happen with uh, all the coaches during the summer break with Andy Felder leaving Austria. And there is some talk that it may not be an Austrian who uh, replaces him. And uh, who knows whether Johan Winterlich, who uh, has no love affair with the man on the bar there, whether he's going to stick it out with the Swiss. I suppose there could even be uh, a bit of uh, swapping. Freiholz, uh, it's OK, better than one or two, but it's uh, nowhere near 160. So that uh, pulls him back, and Sakala will still lead down into fourth place, uh, 142 and a half. The crucial stage is there, Sakala for the Czech Republic, ahead of Ahodon of Finland. Desum's in the bronze uh, position at the moment with... Freiholz and Saito, the next two, Switzerland and Japan. So, good mixture of countries at the moment, but next to jump, 
Jokul Soy for Norway. Comparing him and Sakala. Sakala 170 and a half meters, 184 and a half. So that's uh, a good advantage, some 13 meters, which means uh, again, rough maths here. 161 meters by Jokul Soy would put him into the lead. But he needs to uh, do it also uh, with uh, decent style. Tron Pedersen just looking up there. Jokul Soy. For today in the uh, World Cup rankings, 14th place. And he's going to come in short of what he needs, I think. That's uh, just about 150 metres for Ruhr. So uh, Sakala gets another scalp. Telemark uh, given, but 150.5, it's too short and he's only in fourth place. Well, Primoz Paterka, the last jump of what has been a fairy tale season for this man. He did admit that he was uh, a little bit scared, he had had a tumble here in uh, training. But uh, that was uh, yesterday. Hopefully, uh, he's uh, got that out of his mind. He explained that uh, when he did have his tumble, the uh, team psychologist was saying, just uh, think about something else. But, uh, all he could think about was landing safely. So uh, this to uh, really round off uh, a terrific season. And remember, if it's half decent, he's going to win the Ski Flying World Cup as well. Oh, that was well timed there by Paterka. This looks very... De oh, yes, it is. This is a terrific jump there by Paterka. And he clearly takes the advantage. And that's very close to 200. And thank goodness that somebody's got to grips with this hill. The wind, I have to say, has become a little bit more merciful. But uh, Paterka... Just uh, looking for it, feeling for it. Solid spread of the skis. Now, this is 195 metres, and he takes over from the Czech Sakala at the top of the table. And uh, just eight to come who really counts in this uh, second and final jump of the season. So, Paterka there with a major chance. Technically, just doing a little bit of maths. Funaki, 156 points after the ski flying yesterday. Well, he was uh, 44 behind Paterka, but now the pressure is really on Funaki, who uh, sits at the top of the bar there. Funaki, it was only a metre further, so he's got to do 100, and, well, he's got to do 200 metres, really, to uh, take the lead. Put some pressure on, it's a decent jump, gets the telemark, but it's too short, and Paterka, I think now one can safely say, is ski flying World Cup champion, as well as World Cup champion, as well as Four Hills champion. Second place there for Funaki. He's had a, a good season, Kazuoshi going to finish uh, third in the World Cup rankings, behind Paterka, behind Toma, but uh, no disgrace, that'll be a personal best for him in the season-long competition. Now here's uh, Andy Vidherzel. Vidherzel, similar task to Funaki, if he wants to uh, take over the advantage in this competition. Got to jump, 200 really. And it's not going to be. That's uh, pretty short. He's going to tumble down the order, Andy Vidherzel. Little disappointing, that. 130, 157, I should say. And uh, Vidherzel, who's become a World Cup winner for the first time this season. There's Primoz. 18 years of age, haven't seen sight of his girlfriend, Miss uh, Slovenia.
So, her name's uh, Renata Bohin, by the way. So, we'll have plenty to congratulate him. Now, Espen Bredesen. Looking good here for Espen. Yes, that's a good jump and another excellent landing. Now, Bredesen was a little bit further, well, only fractionally further than Paterka. But not this time around, 175 metres. But look at the star marks, they are solid. It's going to put him up into second place behind uh, Primoz. Nice finish to the season here for Bredesen. One bit of uh, joy for him, Paterka already smiling. Bredesen, of course, who won the season-long World Cup in 1994. Now uh, Sukasek of the Czech Republic. No, well under 130 metres there for Jakub. And he drops away as well at all the flags that are flying now, are Slovenian ones. Still, of course, four to come. The best four from the first round, but down to 12th place goes Sukasek. An opportunity lost there. <laughs> Stefan Horngacher now, 198 and a half metres. His best jump of the season in that first round. It will be terrific if he can get a second one in like that. Could give him his highest place finish. He hasn't been in the top ten in the ranking so far this season. In any individual jump, so a real chance now. So fingers crossed that he can produce something good. You can see the breeze is really stiffening. It's against him. It's right behind him now coming over his left shoulder, that'll push his skis down if he catches a nasty gust of this. Just uh, moves to the side, now to the back again. And uh, he's pushing him down, and that's very short. It's over 100, but not by much there. And that's rough, tough luck there for Stefan. A great first effort and a very disappointing one. You can see there, what could I do? Three to go, and Horngaka declines to 16. Well, here's... Uh, well, I've said it often enough, this is a man who puts in one good jump but then fails to match up the other one. Having said that, he did put two decent efforts in in Bad Mittendorf in the first part of this Ski Flying World Cup when he was 10th on both days. So Higashi, this looks promising here. Higashi is going really long. Oh, it's over 200. It is over 200. Yet another man. That's the 19th by my count, I think. Oh, and he's tumbled over now. Is he past the outrun line? Yes, he is. So... He doesn't have to worry, I think, in the euphoria there. He's just uh, tumbled over the excitement, but he's passed the outrun line, which means his star points are safe. Super in the air here for Higashi. And Ono is going to be... Look at that for style. 20s and 19 and a half. You're looking at almost the perfect jump here. 203 meters to take the lead and two perfect 20s. What a good performance. Super telemark there. And Higashi gets the congratulations. Funaki, the man, congratulating him now. Lassie Odesson of Norway, never won a competition. This has got to be a monster leap from him as well. He's looking for it. Little short there, it's over 180, I think. So it's going to be a decent result for Lassie Odesson. He's had one second place uh, this season going to keep him in third place at the moment. 
So on the podium for Lassie. But this is the one man who could deny him that podium place. Dida Toma, 211 metres. The second longest jump in ski flying history, legal in competition, or indeed uh, in qualification and training, which also counts. But 211 metres, it is in fact in competition the longest jump, because Lassie Osserton's world record was set in warm-up. Dita Toma, and it's not going to be good. Higashi is the winner for Japan. Yet another Japanese win on the last day of the season. You can't believe it. Absolute delight. Dismay there from Toma. Nothing he could do with that. 109 metres plunges him down outside the top 10. But on the very last day of the season, we get a new World Cup winner, Higashi. Akira Higashi, whose joy, I have to say, is being overtaken by the joy of the Slovenian fans who are pouring onto the track to congratulate Primoz Paterka. We'll take a short break and then be back. Organisers have had to uh, push back the fans who uh, had forgotten that there are still a few to jump. Those that uh, had to have to re-jump, Hobart Lee, Urban France, Mateusz Stegner and Pasikito Saho. Just four to go before the uh, party can really begin again. So uh, you can see Horvath Lee is uh, looking down there. They're not quite ready down at the bottom of the hill because uh, effectively this competition is over. But uh, the rules have to be complete. There are some World Cup points at stake here. Horvath Lee. 134 metres first jump poor. 170 and a half his second effort which was cancelled. And this is his third attempt then. Oh! And uh, that's going to leave him down in 30th place. No one, of course, is going to take over from Higashi, who's uh, already telling his story. What a way to fly home. You know, the drinks trolley will get some punishment on the way back to Sapporo, I can tell you that. Urban France. Well, again, it's OK for the third jump of the day, but uh, it's not as good as he had. Two to go. And the stewards are holding the crowd back in one part. You can see them sitting on the fence there, the press goal, waiting to make a dash for it. Well, I'm not sure that is the press goal. That looks like a couple of eager, eager fans with a a can of Slovenia's finest in each hand. Mateja Stegnar. Two to go. Stegnar and Kita Saho for Finland. And uh, this just going through the motions. Uh, one more to go. Massive party, Paterka, who's already received uh, a Harley Davidson for his uh, 203-metre leap in Bad Mittendorf in the first part of this ski flying world competition just at the beginning of February. And there's another Harley Davidson for the spectator here who predicts the longest jump and uh, who jumps it. Now... That's a fabulous prize. I wonder who's got it. I mean, technically, it should be uh, the man who picks out Dita Toma at 213 metres. Toma, 211 in the competition. So whoever picked out Dita Toma at 213 or 211, I'm not quite sure. And uh, Kito Saho absolutely swamped there as he lands at 125 metres. Can't even get his skis off. Well, they deserve this, the Slovenian fans. They've travelled around Europe to support Paterka. He hasn't let them down. 
and uh, there it is, Paterka in second place. Higashi, a World Cup winner for the first time in his uh, life and the first time he's been over 200 metres. What a finale for him. Otterson on the podium there. And I think that's only last his second podium of uh, the current season. That will give him much heart. Sakala fifth yesterday, sixth today. Vidherzl maintaining his end of season consistency. Ahonen, a little bit in the doldrums. Desum recovering on the second jump there ahead of Jokelsoy to uh, finish the uh, top 10. Well, what a story for Paterka. He really has had a fabulous season. He's competed in 22 of the 26 jumps that have taken place this season. And Paterka's strike rate is absolutely extraordinary because in those 22 jumps, on no less than 14 occasions, has he been on the podium. And that is an amazing strike rate. Well over 50%, close to uh, 60, 70%. And I can't remember anyone doing that for a long, long time and a deserved winner of the World Cup. And he said, uh, well, I suppose if I get another couple more seasons like this one, I'll uh, start thinking that uh, I really must have been born under a lucky star. Well, the gods have been kind to him. They've not been so uh, generous to one or two others, particularly Roberto Ciccone. I spare a thought for him. I hope that he and Italian fortunes change next year and during the summer, he unlocks the key that will let him jump as he did a couple of years ago. Last man to get a point, Horvard Lier for Norway, but that just about wraps up the World Cup. And at the end of 26 competitions, there it is, Paterka, proud at the top of the table, well clear of Dita Toma. Funaki finishing third, his best ever finish, ahead of Okabe and Saito, Japan with three in the top five. That tells you what a strong squad Ono has got to take forward to next year's Olympic Games. The sideline, Andy Goldberger, he'll be back. He finishes sixth ahead of Christian Brendan, who returned rejuvenated after the World Championships. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed our World Cup coverage from myself, David Goldstrom, and on behalf of all the Eurosport Nordic team. Thanks so much for your company since December. We leave you with a happy, smiling face of the champion. Thanks also to our Slovenian hosts. For now, though, it's time to take our leave as the fans...